All right, hi, what's up everyone? And welcome back to my channel. I am of course Hot Dogs and we are here for another installment of The Sims 4 Survivor Oasis. Um, when we last left off, all I did was introduce you to two new teams, um, both teams of eight Sims made up of, why did I, eight Sims. <laughs> Eight Sims made up of four winners of previous Survivor seasons and four of your favorite townies from the Sims franchise. Of course, we have the Red Nookstone tribe, and we also have the Green Sand Trap tribe. Um, but today, we actually are jumping right into it. We have our first luxury competition. And with luxury competitions, we're just going to reward um, whatever team wins with something that helps them at camp, whether it's power water shelter extra food whatever it's going to be today we're actually going to be competing for entry into each shelter whether it's the gas station or the house um, and we're going to be doing that through the competition called sweat it out now as you just saw we have two shipping containers inside our saunas one for each team so we're going to go ahead, bring out the tribes now, and the object of this competition is pretty simple. You want your tribe to stay in the sauna the longest. Um, to do this, we are going to separate them into groups of four, so half the tribe is going to go in at once, and then whenever they get tired or, or whenever one needs to leave, another one is going to take their place. And we're just going to see how long each tribe can maintain the heat for. Um, so for the Red Tribe, for the Red Nookstone Tribe, we are going to have Tina, Rich, Bella, and Cochran be competing first for them. And then for the Green Sand Trap Tribe, we're going to be having Brian, Natalie, Aliana, and Vesepia. And, of course, leave it to Richard to get completely naked. Um, if you saw any of Richard Hatch's seasons, he loves being naked, just walking around camp naked. Um, so I'm not too surprised that he would go into a sauna naked. <laughs> and then in the green sauna, we see that Brian is also naked. Um, but it's, it's a little awkward because he's like in there with all girls. So seems a bit dicey. And then we can see that everyone else um, is just kind of waiting patiently in the little hangout area that I've designed for them. Again, if you like this tribal council, it's not even tribal council, if you like this challenge arena, um, I will put it up on my gallery. I think it's called like Yumi Challenge Arena because like that's the lot it's on or something like that. Um, but yeah, they're all kind of just hanging out up there. They're not really able to see inside the saunas just because the way the saunas are facing despite them having real windows. Um, also, I think it's almost a hindrance to go second because, I mean, I'm not fulfilling their needs while they're up there. So they're just standing there, you know, getting bored, having to pee, getting hungry, whatever it is, before they even go into the sauna. Um, so I think it's almost better for the group that went first and I'm not going to make them redo it either. So once the, a person is out of this group one, um, they're not entering the sauna again. They're out for good. In my head, I'm like, I would definitely be good at this challenge. Like I've been in saunas before. Um, so I really enjoyed it. I could stay in there for a long time. However, they do not have like the little plunge pool. The plunge pool really helps if you're in a sauna, but whatever. Um... But then you also have to think about, like, they're living, these castaways, hypothetically, are living in a desert. I haven't given them anything, so they haven't even really had access to water or anything like that. Um, and now I'm making them just sweat. <laughs> like, this would actually be a really dangerous challenge to have on Survivor. Because you know that the castaways would be like, I'm staying in here until I pass out. Like, that would be their goal. So you just have so many dehydrated people after this, like, and then they would have to go back to camp and one team isn't going to have water still. All right, now this is where the competition really starts to get harder because the green team sauna is getting funky. Okay, like they are tooting. Um, and it's just getting real gross. The filters are getting congested and it is being to stink. Just, it looks like fungus is in the air, basically. 
Meanwhile, the red team is still doing pretty good. Like, they're not in a stinky ass sauna, but they're still doing fine. But, like, the green team is really going to suffer now because not only do they have to deal with the heat, but they also have to deal with the smell. And this is still just group one. I'm not going to clean the sauna out for group two. No, group two is going to have to come into it and immediately be smelling it. So, uh, their only hope is that the red team gets smelly soon. Or else it's going to be hard for them here on out. Um, I really like the nice synchronized hand movements they have going on. Like you have, you know, the, the hand wave. You got the wipe. You got the lean back. You know, they have like a whole little TikTok sauna dance going on on the red team. However, on the green team, we see that Brian is the first one to quit. All right, so it looks as though he could not take the stink anymore, and he is the first person to quit. So we are going to swap Brian out for Johnny Zest, and Johnny Zest is going to come down here and try to do his best. And while I was doing the swapping, I noticed that Rich actually ended up quitting, and he is the first person on the red team to quit, and he is going to swap places with Brant. And unfortunately for Brandt, it looks as though he got there right when the red sauna started to become stinky and funky as well. He actually looks like he almost quit altogether when he smelt it. He was like, you know what? Do I really want to do this? Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and he gets naked. I guess it's like a, a guy's thing. Just guys get naked. Um, I would get naked in a sauna, but I don't know. I don't know why it feels so weird on here. Maybe because it's like a TV show, but... <laughs> And it seems as though Brian and Rich kind of started a trend because uh, all of group one members from the red team and the green team, um, they all quit. So we're just doing pretty much a full swap. Um, so taking their place now in the red team all together is going to be Nervous, Brant, Nina, and Jenna. And then for the green team, we're going to have Erwin, Johnny, Fabio, and Eliza competing. Now, like I said, I wasn't going to be filling any of the group two's needs, so it looks as though Eliza peed herself while waiting. Um, so not only do they have to deal with the stench of the stinky sauna, but also Eliza. Um, and it looks as though Brant on the red team keeps questioning whether or not he wants to quit or not. He keeps getting up, putting, on his, putting his clothes back on, and then he sits back down. I don't know how much longer he's actually going to last in there. However, Johnny Zest has decided he can no longer take any more on the Green Sand Trap Tribe, and he is out of the competition for good, meaning that they only have three Sims left. Also, I noticed that almost everyone, including Nina, is naked in the Red Tribe, so... Uh, party. But, like I said, I didn't think Brant would last very long, so he is out of the competition on the red team. And then at the same time, we also have Fabio on the green team leaving. So that means we have three players left for the red Nookstone tribe, and we only now have two players left for the green Sandtrap tribe. Honestly... The red sauna looks pretty lit. Like, you have Jenna naked. Of course, she did that on her original season. You got Nina naked because she's a wild child. You got Nervous Subject naked. Like, it looks like a party in there. They're kind of, like, laughing and kicking. Meanwhile, in the green sauna, you got Erwin and Eliza. And Eliza's already pissed herself. Like, mm, mm. I don't know. I don't know about that one. But, um... I, I think I would kind of get along with the Red Tribe a little bit more. Like, they have a bit more personality types that I'm into. What about you guys? That's actually a question I surprisingly didn't ask in the last episode. Is, what tribe would you want to be on? What tribe do you like the most? Um, let me know all of that down below. And let me know what you think of this competition, by the way, too. So, let me know in the comments. I love talking to my little beanie weenies. All right, now warning, this is about the time where everyone decides to quit at the same time. So we have Jenna quitting first, and then Erwin quitting, leaving only Eliza competing for the green team. But 
She doesn't have to compete for very long because Nervous and Nina quit at the same time as well, leaving Eliza as the sole person in Asana, meaning the green team has surprisingly won the Sweat It Out luxury competition, and they will be winning the ability to go inside their house and to have shelter, a kitchen, a little bathroom. It's going to be great for them, and I'm really excited, but unfortunately... That does mean that the Red uh, Nookstone tribe is going to be going back to their campsite empty-handed. That sucks for them, but it's really good for the green team. What do you guys think of that? I can't believe Eliza is the one that pulled that off. Like, their sauna was the one that got dirtiest first. And she also went into the competition already pissing herself and smelling. So maybe that's why the smell didn't bother her. She was like, I already stink. So she just didn't care. But... I'm really surprised by that. What do you guys think of the results? Um, and we are going to cut back to the tribes and see what they think of their reward. All right, so here we are uh, on day three, and the uh, Sand Trap Tribe is just now arriving back from the luxury competition. As you can see, there is a creeper outside their door. Don't know who he is. Um, this is why the campsites needed a fence all around it and needed a front door. Like, I am trying to keep people out of this campsite. Um, but they are now back to their new luxurious campsite after winning the sweated out competition. And that unlocked the interior of their house. But also, one of the shipping containers um, is now open and that includes some workout gym equipment. Um, inside the house, we have a little kitchenette, um, a bar, a couple beds and a bathroom. Now, it is not luxurious whatsoever on the inside. Um, the beds are not comfortable and also they are still without power. Um, so even though they are have an interior and stuff like that, no power, no AC. I'm not even sure if the water is cut on either. So it's only a little bit of an improvement, mainly that they have beds. <laughs> It looks as though Eliza, our competition winner, is um, working out in their new gym. She's the first one to take advantage of it. And that is a plus as well. Not only do they have beds now, that the red team already had some beds, um, but they also have gym equipment. And not just a punching bag. So the red team already had a punching bag, and the green team now has a full gym. So, as I said, the tribes are a bit uneven when it comes to hobbies, and this one definitely, this luxury competition definitely awarded them that. So, not only do they have all these different hobbies in the gym, but they also have a bar in the kitchen, and all that stuff is going to pay off in future competitions. Alright, so as Eliza fire dances and Natalie decides to actually paint... Um, I haven't seen anyone do that yet, so she's one of the first. Um, everyone else kind of slowly starts to take advantage of their house they have now earned and unlocked. Um, Vesepia straight away goes to the bar and starts practicing her bartending. Erwin's kind of waiting at the bar, waiting anxiously for a drink that probably won't be too good as none of them have skills. And uh, Johnny gets in bed and self woohoos. Um, there is a private bedroom, by the way. These are just kind of the spare beds that I have out. I didn't really want to put couches, even though I probably should have. Um, they can still nap on couches, but I put these, these inflatable beds instead. Um, and he could have totally went in the private bedroom. Did he? No. No, he didn't. Um, and you notice, like, Aliana is outside sleeping on a log instead of going on a, a bed inside. I don't know what's with them doing that. I don't know if they just have, like, bad backs and they like the pressure or what it is but it's really strange i'm not too sure um but eventually everyone slowly starts gathering um all together they're all kind of watching the sepia bartend and it's really nice to see them all kind of get along for once they haven't really been getting along previously they were they have a smaller camp so they were all cramped together um and i think they're just getting on each other's nerves and it's kind of nice to see them actually be a little happy for once. It seems as though Brian is still a bit moody. But um, it's understandable. Uh, they haven't won everything. But a little more space and a little something to talk about is nice. Leave a dipid. Oh, sheer jahabbery. Infang, Seraphim, Kalu. Ah. 
All right, so it looks as though Natalie is the only person outside right now. She's working hard on that mural. I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that it doesn't go against my green aesthetic I have going on at this campsite. Um, and while she's doing that, Eliza seems to be the first one to take advantage of the private bedroom. She goes in there and decides to call it a night and goes to sleep finally in a comfortable bed. It's not even that comfortable, but it's sure better than the ground or a log, I would think. And Vesepia actually ends up making her way outside and helping Natalie paint as well. She's getting the job done with her. And this really helps bond. That's like one thing that I really like about including hobbies in the campsite is that not only do you increase hobbies, increase chances of winning competitions in the future, but also some of these you can do with more than one person and uh, painting is one of them. So it's nice to see that maybe they can form a little bond going. All right, so inside, it looks as though Aliana has taken over Vesepia's role of bartender. And Johnny has not moved from his spot since he self wooed in that bed. He has declared this his bed. He has not moved. And Erwin seems to be in a corner by himself. He actually kind of follows Fabio outside and tries to get attention out there, but no one really seems to like him. Every time he's around someone, they kind of get annoyed. I think it's because he was annoyed the first day of camp. Um, and he was kind of grouchy then, and it just kind of gave everyone a bad first impression, which isn't great in the game. Not to mention, Erwin's got a bit of a temper on him. And also, surprisingly, um, as we know, at the end of the last episode, Brian had found the hidden immunity idol, which is this lump of clay, and he had put it back down where he had found it. And it seems as though Fabio has now came across it himself and is now in possession of the hidden immunity idol. Will he keep it for good or will it keep uh, flip-flopping around the camp? We'll have to wait and find out. Remember, anyone can get possession of the idol but it is only important whose possession it is in when they are at tribal council so as long as fabio keeps it or it is in his pocket for a tribal council then he is safe So it's officially starting to get pretty late here at the Green Sand Trap Tribe. Um, everyone is still awake apart from Eliza, who is sleeping cozily in her new bed. Um, there's a few people scattered around, kind of in two groups. So inside we have Aliana bartending for Brian and Johnny. Eventually Fabio does end up joining them. Um, and then outside we have... Uh, Natalie and Vesepia continuing with their painting. Thankfully, it is like blue and green, so I'll let it pass. Okay, at least it's not like a red mural. And uh, Erwin is just forced to kind of play chess by himself because no one really wants to socialize with him. He's moody. It makes everyone else moody. It's just like not looking good for Erwin. <laughs> um, like I said, though, eventually Fabio does join uh, everyone else inside. And it's really awkward to think like Brian knows about the possession. I don't even know if... Like, people have seen the Hidden Muni Idol, but I don't know if... I don't know. It's very strange to think that someone, you know, you could find it and then someone else can end up being saved by it. So, I would be pretty annoyed if I was Brian. He should have kept it. And, um, yes, we did see Fabio turn it into a bowl. That doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't matter what shape he has it. I know who has the idol, okay? <laughs> and, sadly, Erwin actually ends up, um, just talking to himself. Because no one will talk to him. So he just stands in the middle of camp and performs like Hamlet soliloquies all to himself. Uh, meanwhile, Natalie and Vesepia end up wrapping up their really nice painting. Who knows if they'll end up painting any of the other ones. I don't really know how many skill points they have gained. Um, but I really like how it ended up. I'm glad it ended up being that mural. And we're going to end up wrapping it up for the Sand Trap Tribe. Um, the episode is not over just yet. Okay, we still, I'm going to have a little bit of a taste of what's going on at the Red Nookstone Tribe as well before we do a full close of day three. All right, so the Nookstone Tribe is arriving back pretty late. Um, since the luxury competition, so in the desert, it's probably getting pretty cold there. Um, and uh, some of them end up heading just straight to bed. 
Uh, I know Rich does in the other ones, just go straight to working on their hobbies. Um, instantly, like we see Nina is working at the woodworking table. Um, there's some on the chess board. Everyone just kind of instantly starts making themselves busy, probably to distract themselves from their loss. Like if they had one today, the gas station would have opened. Um, and inside there is a little bar and stuff like that. And then a bathroom would have also opened in the gas station. And then one of the shipping containers, instead of being a gym, it would be a bedroom and stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff they would have gotten today and it would have been a really nice day for them. However, it's just another sad, cold night outside. As you can see, as soon as they got back into camp, Tina was straight to the fire. She set the fire, sat down on the log, and set up her camp there. Now, that's kind of Tina's territory. She stays by the campfire. If you want to talk to Tina, you go talk to Tina. And Nervous is one of the only townies that really does. Um, he tends to go back and forth between the groups. Meanwhile, as you see, after Bella goes to bed, it's Tina just sitting there, watching as all the young people are on one side working on their skill points, and Jenna is, of course, right by her side working as well. Um, I would definitely say that Tina and Jenna are the biggest, tightest bond that we have on the Red Tribe still. I would say when it comes to the winners versus um, townies kind of feud they had going on, um, it's kind of almost settled down to more of a men versus women. Like, the winners versus townies thing is still definitely there, but I think if anyone were to flip-flop, it would be within the... Um, boy girl groups um because like as you can see all the boys are coming together all the girls are going to cluster together um this tribe i think will definitely have a huge fallout if they do continue to keep losing but what do you guys think like do you think the red tribe is going to keep losing do you think it depends on the competition because like i would say that they have a lot of athletic guys but it's honestly pretty even um do you think the green tree the green dream the green tribe is going to keep winning um let me know about all that in the comments below i love talking to you guys and i respond to pretty much every comment so let me know i'm a really lonely wiener and i love to hear what you guys think of the series so far Seneca, Belindy. And as you can see, uh, Cochrane was just playing with the fire, and as soon as he goes over and starts messing with the fire, Tina is immediately onto him. Um, thankfully, not in an angry way, and maybe it'll help. Um, it's like whenever you do go by the fire, you do inevitably bond with Tina. Um, so who knows? I mean, I'm not too sure where her relationships actually go with, like who she's actually close to, who she actually likes, apart from Jenna. Um, but. Cochran has always kind of been over there with her, so I would feel like he could be her number two, potentially. But he's definitely trying to work his way into the young, cool hip alliance, which I think are the townies. Like, if you just look at the townies that all hang out together, like, the four of them are so cool. Like, Nina, Bella, Nervous, and Brand. All of them just look really cool to hang out with, and I feel like I would probably gravitate to them more than I would the winners as well. Um, but who knows? We'll have to see how this turns out, especially when it comes to Friday, because on Friday's episode, it's going to be a bit of a doozy. So normally our schedules are um, going to be in the future. Monday is a luxury competition. Wednesday is an immunity competition. And then Friday is the tribal council. However, with the season premiere and everything like that, it kind of got squished. So Friday, we have a big episode planned where we are going to do the immunity challenge. One tribe will win immunity and the other one will be forced to see Jeff Probst at tribal council. And then included in Friday's episode will be tribal council. We will see which castaway will be sent home home and be the first one gone no one ever likes to be the first one gone and then also we'll find out a little twist about this season there might be um multiple reasons why it's called survivor oasis apart from it taking place in oasis springs so you'll have to wait till friday to find out about all of that and i'm gonna go ahead as the sun is rising on day four here in oasis springs i'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here and we'll just have to catch up and see what else happens in Friday's episode. Um, of course, comment down below, like I've been saying, I love talking to you guys. I've slowly grown to almost 200, and I couldn't be happier. 
Um, so thank you guys for that. Of course, like and subscribe as I will be posting every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the next two and a half months. So if you want to make sure you get all the videos, subscribe, hit the bell, everything like that. And then also... I'm going to plug myself in a little bit here. I do have a Twitter that I'm not huge on. I'm not going to, I'm not always tweeting, but if you want another way to get notifications, because as we know, YouTube isn't that trustworthy when it comes to getting notified, um, you can follow me on Twitter, and that is Hot Dogs Sims. S O H O T. Fuck. <laughs> uh, erase that. H O T D O G S. S I M S. And then you can also follow me on TikTok where I post little previews of the episodes that have been posted. And then I also might start doing like weekly recaps if you'd be into that. Um, and my TikTok is hotdog799 because all the other ones were taken. Um, so yeah, I'll link all that down below though, of course. And I'll see you guys on Friday. Bye.